Hey guys, Kongai here, and today we're going to be talking about the British light tanks. Uh, when they came out two days ago, they were everywhere, and now today, as I was playing them, uh, getting a video, they're, they don't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be as many of them. There's one in front of me, but that's it in this game. Um, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I missed some on the enemy team. But the, everybody's back to playing the other light tanks. And, uh, yeah, these, these light tanks are bad. It's as simple as that. And people are like, actually, clone guy, I had a really good game in my so so it's actually not a, not even a bad. It's not they're not bad because I had a good game. You, anyone can have a good game. Um, a, having a good game in a tank doesn't make it a good tank. This, but the DPM on these are so bad. This one is <clears throat> one thousand three hundred and fifty. Okay, the Cromwell at tier six has. 1,950, I think it is, or 1,908, something like that. And then the Comet at Tier 7 has almost 2,000. So, yeah, you're 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 lacking by quite a bit of DPM. The issue is, it's not just Cromwells and Comets you have to fight. You also have to fight T-71DAs. T-71 CMCTs, are those, is that what they're called? You have to fight LTGs, WZs, Dragons, all sorts of other light tanks that you have to fight in these things. And if a light tank had bad DPM, I, I think it would be fine. As long as they all had bad DPM. But this one is on another level of bad DPM. Along with that, the gun bloom is horrible. It This thing, you have to wait for it to aim. Once it does aim, sure, it's a little bit accurate. But if you miss, uh, it's just watch watch what we do to this RU251 in the background, okay? We shoot him once. He's going to get tracked in front of our gun. And uh, we're just going to... And we miss another shot. But look, okay, he's tracked. We have 135 alpha damage, by the way. 135. Another tank that has 135, I believe, is the Cromwell B. And if you have a good crew and max that thing out, you can have, guess what? Actually, I think it's 140, because I think the uh, comet is 145. Maybe it is 135. Regardless, you can have a 3.09 seconds reload. I'm sitting here right now with over 5. And yeah... It felt like we did a whole lot more damage there, but no, we didn't. We did 560. That's all it was. And yeah, I'll go back to what I was saying. My point I was making was is if all light tanks had bad DPM, then this would be fine. This would be nothing. It's just another light tank, right? Your job is to scout. But the issue here is all the other light tanks don't have bad DPM, and they will pulverize you. <laughs> you will get smacked in the face. And, and AMX 1375 will put his magazine into you, reload before you have the chance of de even doing half of his health, and then put another magazine in you. And there's nothing you can do about it, not in this tank. This is one of those tanks where if you are fighting against a 48% win rate player and they just decide to YOLO you, they're going to they're going to win. It's as simple as that. There's nothing really you can do about it. And um Yeah, because even even if like a Cromwell YOLOs you, I got YOLO in a Cromwell actually. I should have used that as an example, but I didn't I didn't actually record that. And it was just sad. I was like, well, I guess I die. The tier six is YOLOing me. I can't do anything. And that that kind of was the trend in this tank. I felt like people just like YOLOing these tanks. Why? Because they know they can beat them. It doesn't matter who's driving them. You can beat them. Uh, they're just bad tanks. And this whole idea of, oh, well, Klunga, you're supposed to be scouting for your team. It That doesn't work half the time. More than half the time. Like in this game, I wanted to go to this position, get into that position, uh, help win this corner, and then from there, move on and scout for my team. It didn't work that way. Our team just lost the corner. And... I can't do anything. I want to scout. No, I can't scout. Scouting is scouting is not allowed. It's illegal, right? Um, and that's an issue. Scouting is makes you very much team dependent. You have to rely wholeheartedly on your team, and you also have to hope you get a good map. You get a good spawn. A light their light tank doesn't counter spot you. All these things have to go right for you to actually be able to scout properly in a light tank. And this tank is slow. It, I'm going 57, and anytime I turn, I go even slower. And this thing turns slowly. Um, its engine was nerfed from the PC version, and that's another thing they did, which kind of upsets me. The engine power nerf is going to affect everyone. Everyone is going to get affected by the fact that the engine power has been nerfed, all right? So you've got three, two, three, four less horsepower per ton on each and every single one of these uh, light tanks, okay? So you're slightly slower than PC. That makes you slower than all the other light tanks here on console because all the other light tanks have really, really good power to weights. So that does come into play with this thing. And uh, the buffs they gave them are more ammunition. The only players who are going to benefit from the more ammunition are the players who are shooting more, which means the better players. And guess what? 
nice fully aimed shot at the lower plate goes into his upper plate. Nice. And now we are we don't have the reload speed to actually shoot again because that would be silly, and we die. So <laughs> there there's us dying there in this tank. But back to the point I was making. Only good players are actually going to be able to use the extra rounds that they gave it. So they made this tank yet again, kind of like what they did on PC, where it was like, okay, this tank is really only good for good players. Um, they did the same thing here, but even made it more so only good for good players because they've nerfed it for bad players. Bad players are going to be driving around slower, crashing into buildings, not being able to turn in time like I'm doing here. And uh, it's, it, yeah, it's just like, okay, who... Who thought of this? Who decided that, okay, nerfing nerfing the British light tanks was a good idea? I don't know. Oh, but we gave it more ammo. Yeah, that's only going to help the good players. Only the good players are going to care about that. And this engagement you see in the background is I'm playing against like this 47 percenter who has no clue what he's doing. And uh, we should be crushing him in any other light tank, but we're not because our DPM is too bad. And we bounce a couple shots. We miss a couple shots. And we juke him. Like, look, look at this. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We absolutely outplay him outplay the living daylights out of him but we can't do anything about it because our dpm is just too bad and our tank is just too slow we had no ability to escape him which is something a light tank needs the ability to do is run away and when your tier 7 goes 57 kilometers an hour guess what you're being outrun by t20s you're being outrun by tier 9 mediums you're getting outrun by tier 8 light tanks tier 7 light tanks tier 6s like the Cromwell is outrunning you you can't even escape a panzer 54 which by the way is going to kill you because he has more dpm than you and the same health as you so you're doomed if a panzer 54 decides hey i'm going to go kill this light tank guess what he gets to do that because you can't escape him and he is going to out dpm you so yeah it's like wow that's a, that's a good design you're getting completely just a vaticadabra by lower tier tanks. And unfortunately, um, I don't have the tier 8, 9, or 10, but I have been talking to people who are playing them, and they're saying the same thing. They're saying, yeah, the tier 8 isn't any better than the tier 7. It's, it's the same experience. You're getting the same exact experience as you got in the tier 7. And the tier 9 is the same way. From what I hear, the tier 10 is the best tier for tier out of all of them. However, it's still not worth buying or you know spending free xp on which i think a lot of people are going to do they're like oh this is such a bad line i'm gonna spend free xp which i have a feeling was wargaming's plan they're, they'll release a tank line so bad that the players are forced to spend free xp to get the tier 10 because this is a long grind the amount of xp you need is ridiculous for such bad tanks with bad guns the guns are expensive and they're not even that good the engine is expensive and those have been nerfed and then the tank re to research is expensive and well those are just bad so people are going to be spending free xp and so what i encourage you today uh is don't do that don't give in to spending free xp on these vehicles okay if you're going to grind them grind them properly it's like don't feed this don't feed wargaming because right now they think if they get get a lot of money from this they're going to think this is a good idea like fantastic if we nerf tanks to oblivion make, release really bad tanks and people are spending money on them, then uh, we need to keep doing that. <laughs> so make sure you don't do that. And now you're seeing the background is the C71, just 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 to put in perspective. And this was, by the way, my very next game. I'm just like, okay, I played those games in the, the little rink-a-dink setter, and I'm like, okay, now let me go play a game in my T71, just 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 to see the difference here, just to see what happens. And then we pull off this game. Why? Because it's a, it's a freaking it's not a British tank. Look at our DPM. Uh, it's it's so much better. We have 135. Alpha as well, I think, with the same alpha damage. Three second, three and a half seconds reload. Very good accuracy. Gun handling. We can take vertical stabilizer. APCR is standard. We are super mobile. Go at what 64 kilometers an hour. Turn on a dime. Super hard to hit. Like, why on earth would I ever play the setter? And moving up the tiers. So we talked about the tier eight as well. Um, it has 230 alpha, I believe. It's got a nice, nice. What is it? A 20 pounder, which is like, hey, that's cool for a light tank. Uh, but yet again, the gun handling isn't very good. You can't shoot on the move. Your DPM is bad. Um, and you're slower than all the other light tanks again. And you, there are Germans that have 240 alpha and a good reload, which are just going to pulverize you as well. So yet again, um, you're going to get outclassed by so many other tanks. The Bulldog will probably even outclass you just because it's more mobile than you. It's got a more accurate gun than you. It does have better DPM, even though the Bulldog has a pretty bad gun for its tier. That is probably one of the worst light tanks right now, tier for tier at tier 8. Um, then at tier 9, now everybody has 240 alpha damage. But guess what? So does the British one. And oh boy, aren't you excited about that? You're in a British light tank and you have 240 alpha damage. Woohoo! 
Yes, I have 240 in my RU251. I have 240 in my T49, which reloads every four seconds, by the way. <laughs> like, I have 320 if I decide to use the light, the WZ light tank. I have 250 if I decide to use the Russian light tanks. I have a four-round autoloader with 240 if I use the Amex 1390. So, yet again, there's, there's no point to it. So then you're like, okay, what about the pride and joy? The tier 10, the gem, the gem at the end of the line, the manticore. People are saying it is much better than the other tiers. However, I've also heard it is still worse than all the other light tanks in this game. The DPM is abysmal. 14 seconds on 390 alpha. And you're like, 390 on a light tank, that's great. Ah, uh, that's what Wargaming wants you to think. 390 is not great. You have 390 on the AMX 13105, 390 on the Sheridan. You have 390 on the uh, WZ-132A. Is what it's called, or 1321. Uh, so, yeah, you already have 390 in all those tanks. So why do you need 390 on a British light tank, which is kind of slow, sluggish compared to the other light tanks? Um, has bad gun handling, other than the fact that if you're not moving, it can aim in faster. So I guess that's cool. Sure, if you want to just stand still all, all game, which is pretty much what you have to do in these tanks, is play passively. They're passive scouting tanks, and that's what they are. So my recommendation to you guys is, if you already have goals in this game, if you are, if you have other light tanks you haven't ground out yet, get those first. Right now, there's no reason to get the British light tanks. They're just that bad. Um, don't waste your time with them unless you already have all the other light tanks and you want to get a new, new light tanks. Then absolutely, that makes sense that you would want to get those and go ahead and get them. But like I said, if you like, you don't have the Sheridan yet, go get that. You don't have the Amex thirteen one hundred five yet, don't um, go get that. If you don't have the uh, T100 LT, go get that. It's, just, it's it's simple as that. If you don't have the other light tanks, go get those first. That's my number one recommendation. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself out playing these. All right, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, slap that like button. Comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the British life in the comments below. And I'll be seeing you guys all later. Take care, everyone. And peace out.